All right, minutes ago, OpenAI just announced a brand new model called GPT-40 Mini. All right, so there's going to be a lot of talk about this, but I'm going to try and clear things up with what we know about this new model. Is this what we're all going to be using, or is this just for developers, and does it actually have more to do with Claude than the rest of the landscape. All right, let's dive in and find out. All right, what's going on, y'all? My name's Jordan Wilson, and I run Everyday AI. So we're a daily live stream podcast, free daily newsletter to help everyday people learn and leverage generative AI to grow their companies and careers. So uh, please subscribe to this channel and make sure to read our daily newsletter at youreverydayai.com. All right, so let me just quickly talk uh, about this brand new model. And it's only been a couple of minutes, so I'll probably update this video as, we go, uh, as we're able to learn more. Uh, just shared a little bit of a thread over on Twitter or X or whatever people call it now uh, about this uh, new model that OpenAI just released called GPT-40 Mini. All right, so you should take note of the word mini. It is a small model, which is actually not where OpenAI usually plays. Uh, so this is, I think, aimed a lot more toward developers. Uh, we don't have even a, uh, an official release yet from OpenAI. This is just according to uh, reports uh, that have obviously been confirmed uh, here on Twitter by an employee at uh, OpenAI. So let's go ahead and I want to tell you a couple of things on what this actually means for most of us. So if you go into your chat GPT account uh, and, and, and if you see if you have access to this model, you might not. So uh, I don't even know if this is something that you're going to be able to use on the front end. Maybe, but actually maybe not. Uh, so it is supposed to be replacing GPT 3.5. All right. So that's another thing to keep uh, to keep in mind about the even the naming mechanisms here, right? So uh, if you have a free account, uh, you are able to use the newest model, which is GPT 4. Oh, right. That is their large model. So essentially GPT-40 mini is going to be a much smaller version of this. So uh, it is supposed to be replacing GPT-3.5. However, I don't know if this is going to be available in uh, the kind of consumer or front end version of chat GPT, or if this is just going to be uh, for developers. So we're going to talk about that here in a minute. Uh, so make sure if you do want to try this out, uh, you know, log out, log back into your account, update. If you do have the desktop app, update the app and, you know, check. Uh, OpenAI did say that uh, this will be rolling out to free and paid users today. So today is Thursday, July 18th. Uh, so make sure to check it out. Uh, also, you should be check checking in the uh, playground here. So you can just go to platform.openai.com, log in with your same credentials, uh, and you should be able to see. So at least right now, I'm going to go ahead and refresh. Uh, I don't see the model in here, but again, uh, presumably this should be dropping here at any point. You can always go down there, click uh, show more models. Sometimes they have a date attached to them. Uh, so right now I do not see this 4.0 mini model, but again, uh, presumably it should be out whether it's today, you know, open, AI, open AI says, you know, Oh, this is coming today or this week. And sometimes it gets pushed back. Uh, I would expect for a small model that this would get rolled out today. All right. So what does this mean? And why is open AI announcing actually a small model? Aren't they large language model makers? Well, yes. I've said this on the show like a year ago. I personally think the future of large language models is working with probably dozens of small language models. And there's going to be some sort of uh, conversational or interface AI when we talk to a model uh, that then directs us or gives us answers uh, instantly from the correct small language model. There's obviously huge benefits to using small models. Number one, they're generally trained on specific tasks, right? Um, this is what companies fine tune and, and bring in uh, via RAG uh, information to these models, right? So small models are much faster. They're more nimble and then they're cheaper. But I actually think this has a lot to do with Anthropic's Claude 3 uh, and Haiku, right? So this is from Anthropic's website right here. Um, pretty a direct shot, right? A direct shot at uh, OpenAI when this was released a couple of months ago, Claude 3. So they have three different variations. They have Claude 3 Haiku. They have Claude 3 Sonnet, which was recently upgraded to Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And then they have Claude 3 Opus. Uh, and we do know that Open a or sorry, that uh, Anthropic will be releasing 3.5 uh, haiku and 3.5 opus later this year in 2024. So I do think that that, uh, 
there's been a certain point, I think, especially with this new 3.5 Sonnet model that was updated. I think a lot of developers have actually seen, oh, wait, 3.5 Sonnet is pretty good. And I agree, especially with the new artifacts feature, which we've done uh, plenty of reviews on here on this YouTube channel. But I think that actually forced people to look at Anthropic as an entire ecosystem and to start moving uh, their development over to Claude 3 Haiku, right? So in general, right, this isn't how it always works, but you would usually use multiple models when you are building an application. So as an example, if you were using GPT-4.0 as a main model, you might do a lot of the processing, some of the less important things with actually an old model like GPT-3.5, uh, right? Which is why kind of uh, Claude has this comparison here. So uh, if you are building something, you know, GPT-4.0 is actually the most expensive model for developers. So, uh, you know, there's kind of a process and there's probably a more technical term where for everyday people, but uh, when you chunk, right? So a lot of times you're going to chunk a lot of uh, less, quote unquote, less important information or uh, queries that don't necessarily require, require a high level of reasoning that you might find in the most powerful model from OpenAI like GPT-4.0. Uh, so a lot of times you'll chunk that or you'll give it to a cheaper and faster model such as GPT-3.5. And I think what a lot of companies have seen, especially since Claude 3.5 saw it was released, that, hey, GPT-3.5, if you're still sending a lot of information to that, it's getting pretty archaic right now, right? So I think a lot of companies, a lot of developers have started to move over uh, to Claude thanks to 3.5 Sonnet combined with Claude 3 Haiku. Claude 3 Haiku, as you can see on the screen here, is pretty superior, at least when it comes to GPT-3.5, right? So if you look at the cheapest or most affordable or fastest, uh, kind of quote unquote fastest models, uh, Claude Haiku is much cheaper uh, about you know, depending on what metric you look at for input, it's 25 cents versus GPT 3.5. Uh, you know, and this is, I believe, per millions of tokens. Uh, so it's much cheaper and it is more powerful on all of these different, um, you know, MMLU, all these different benchmarks as well. So uh, I do think when we look at uh, this new G point, uh, GPT 4.0 mini, I don't think it's necessarily going to be a model that we all go and use when we log into chat GPT. I do think, uh, although this, uh, for free users who do get access to the quote unquote, most powerful model GPT 4.0, right? When you hit your limits, uh, I believe then you will be going down to GPT 4.0 mini. All right. So Again, th these are assumptions right now. There's not a lot of information, but you know, I know a lot of people. When you see uh, a new model from ChatGPT, you get excited and you're like, "This is going to be the most powerful thing." I think it's actually more right now uh, for developers, and I think more than anything else, it is OpenAI sees some uh, stiff competition from Claude. The combination of Claude Three Haiku for developers and uh, Three Five Sonnet. We also just saw uh, about a week ago. Uh, AWS just uh, announced, so Amazon Web Services just announced that you can fine tune uh, Claude uh, 3 Haiku inside of their platform. So there's been a lot of developments uh, in Claude 3 Haiku and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And I actually think that's what led uh, OpenAI to put this mini model out there, right? Because a lot of people, a lot of companies, a lot of development, uh, sorry, a lot of developers were still using the combination of GPT 4.0 which I think is far better than 3.5 Sonnet still. Uh, but, you know, if you're handing off a lot of the quote unquote less important uh, pieces of a process to a quote unquote cheaper model, you are still using GPT 3.5, which is not very good uh, compared to the other models. So should be interesting to see what happens here. I hope this video was helpful. If so, please go to youreverydayai.com, sign up for the free daily newsletter. Also, please subscribe to this channel and let us know what you want to hear. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you back for another AI in five. Thanks y'all.